Thanks for joining us again on Family Twist, where every episode uncovers the incredible stories that lie within our families and genes. Today, you're about to hear a tale that redefines the very essence of connection and identity. Freda Saperko took a simple DNA test and found herself at the center of a vast and unexpected family network. Join us as we unravel this fascinating journey piece by piece. Get ready for a story that connects the dots across states, parts, and lives. Thanks for joining us again on season four of Family Twist. We've got Brenna Saperko with us today. Welcome, Brenna. Thank you. So just out of the uh, out of the bat, I'm curious about why you decided to take a 23andMe DNA test. Mm-hmm. So I had known I came from a donor for really as long as I can remember. And I was always curious about whether or not I had any siblings. I figured I had some. I never knew how many I was going to have. So I wanted to take the DNA test and find that out, but also find out what else comes with it, like, you know, my origin and where I'm from and everything like that. But I didn't know it would turn out to be so many. (laughs) (laughs) So I remember the last article I read about you, I think it was 65. Have you found more? Yes, I believe there's 75 now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it's increased a lot. (laughs) Wow. Wow. It's amazing. How many have you met in person? Um, Around... 12 of us at one time oh, okay i just recently did a show with inside edition and a lot of us met up there too like some i haven't met yeah wow very cool it's what's it like when you're laying eyes on a sibling for the first time it's very interesting it's weird seeing someone that's kind of similar to you but you didn't grow up with and then you're looking at them and you're seeing all the types of mannerisms that you have too that are very similar and it's kind of like mind-boggling that like you haven't known these people your whole life, but you can sure. relate to them so much. Yeah. Now you have a, a younger brother with your parents, right? Yes, I do. But but no no sisters until you took the DNA test. So yeah. was that something you'd like had always wanted to have a sister? I did always want to have a sister just because I love having my brother, but having a sister is just something completely different. You can relate to other things and they're more my age. So I'm very glad that mm. I get to have that experience with them now. What is the age range of your siblings? It goes from 14 to 27, I believe. Oh, boy. Yeah, so there's a wow. big gap. Okay. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's wild. <laughs> oh, man. And does the 14-year-old, do they know the situation? or? Yeah, they took a test, and then they're, like, in the group chats and everything. There could be oh, okay. younger ones that, you know, just haven't been able to do that yet or, you know, don't want to. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, yeah, they just turned 14, too. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. And within your sibling pod, do you guys know much about the donor father? Um, We don't know who he is. We know his donor number, 2046. So like when you go to pick a donor, you can get an audio recording of them. And it comes with like packets of information about them. So one of the nurses there in the audio recording compared him to some celebrity, but I, li- I cannot remember what celebrity it was in my life. <laughs> but if I remember, I'll let you know. But they said awesome. he was tall dark hair he was charming he was smart all those Mm. things but my mom liked him because he had a good health history which was really important to her yeah sure absolutely well you know it's funny we've been finding out more about the fertility industry and the donor conceived Mm. community just through this podcast and i know you've got some strong opinions about regulations and stuff too what are your thoughts just in general on the donor conception community well From what I've seen since my story has been out and so many people have been expressing their opinions, which I love hearing other people's opinions. That's great. But a lot of people, I feel like, misunderstand the point of a donor and everything like that. Like, sure, you can go out and adopt, but some people want to be able to carry their child. And that's really the only way you're going to be able to do it, especially since a lot of parents that have two gay moms. So it's quite impossible to do it any other way. I do agree in some circumstances it should be more regulated. Like I think 75 siblings is a lot, but at the same time, we're not all condensed in one single area. Like we're across the country and in Canada. Other than that, I mean, I support it. There are definitely people out there who don't Mm -hmm. and you know, that's fine. But on my end, I think it's a great thing that people should take advantage of when they can. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we don't want to disparage clinics that are doing it the right way. It's just we've heard from donor-conceived folks and donors themselves that are just like they weren't giving all the information mm-hmm. or it was like some tricky sort of information as they were giving. I don't know if you're familiar with Donor Dylan on Instagram, but he's found dozens of his kids and like 
it, it was in a roundabout way. It was kind of weird that he was able to be found because he didn't. He marked that he wasn't. He didn't want to be found until he, you know, the kids yeah. were eighteen, and some of the mothers tracked him down. Now, his story is good in that he's starting to form a relationship with some of his kids, but you know, he's. 32 years old and he's got you know dozens and dozens of children it's a lot different like so when he was donating it was like the 1990s and the early 2000s so technology was not like what it is now like now it is so easy to find all the dna things and social media like they weren't worried back then about Mm -hmm. oh like these people are gonna find me through these dna sites i guess so there's a bunch of like loopholes I guess, through the system now and everything. I know, I mean, me and my siblings have talked about it. Like, if we were to find out who he was, we have no interest in going and talking to him because, you know, he wanted to stay private. So that's what we would do for him. Mm. I would feel like bad if I did. I don't want him thinking that we want, like, child support or anything like that. If anything, it would just be like, say thank you like right Right. and maybe some health history there too i mean there's probably more details and stuff that your siblings would like to know just so they can be prepared Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so yeah because things might not pop up till he's older you never know so yeah i mean i'm guessing between you and your 74 siblings everybody's probably Mm -hmm. done all the different available tests so he probably has not done one himself yet yeah yeah (laughs) yeah probably not right (laughs) Oh, what did your parents think about you taking the DNA test and, and potentially finding <clears throat> siblings? They supported me through it. My mom was like, I made this decision. You can go about it however you want to do it and everything. Um, so they were happy about it. They knew that I was excited to do it and see who I could find. And they love when I go and meet them. Like mm-hmm. my dad came to the Inside Edition. and He met some of my siblings. Like they're very involved. They find it very interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Are there uh, any twins or triplets in your sibling pod? Yeah, there's a lot. There's at least seven sets of twins, oh, wow. I believe. And there's one set of triplets that I know of. Wow. So there's a decent wow. amount. Very yeah. cool. Well, we know that you're still in school and you're, you're very athletic. Have you found any uh, similarities in studies or, or athleticism between your siblings and you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like we we all love doing sports and working out. I remember at one of my meetups with them, I went to New Jersey and we all went to the gym, like all 11 of us That's cool. pulled up the Planet Fitness and started working out. <laughs> wow. It was so fun. But we're all very sporty or artsy. I'm an exercise science degree. I don't know if anyone else is, but a lot of them do like nursing. One of them is pre-med, I think. Some architecture. Oh, wow. So like overall, our interests like are intertwined hmm. in some type of way. Really Very cool. cool. <clears throat> Very cool. Have you had the opportunity to get together with any of them for a holiday? No, we have not oh, done okay. that. Which that would be fun. Yeah. That would be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but unfortunately, not are yet. there some that are within driving distance of you? Yes, there's around five others that live in Maryland where okay. I live. So my oldest sister, 27, Fabi, she lives in Baltimore, oh. and I live like 15 minutes from Baltimore. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, then the rest are like. 40, 45 minutes. So we're all pretty oh, close nice. in that aspect. Really cool. Now, how often do you get mm-hmm. to see uh, Fabi? Um, it's hard because she worked a good job. And so she's really busy yeah. a lot. And I'm like two hours away because I'm in school. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. not that often, but we try to see each other as much as we can. Very cool. cool. Plan things out. Cool. What are some of the surprising things that you've discovered <clears throat> since you took the test and found all of these siblings? Aside from the surprise of having 75, <laughs> 74 other siblings. <laughs> Let's see. Um, probably that a lot of their stories are different in the way that they came to be donor conceived or the way that they found out about it. Mm. Like I found out about it because my mom eventually told me, but I, it was quite, no, well, kind of. So I was in the car with my cousin and I was upset because I was like, I don't know who my dad is. And then she was like, don't you come from a sperm donor? When I was with my grandparents, I wasn't even with my parents. Oh and I was like, do I? Like, <laughs> can you answer that for me? I don't know. Oh, boy. But I know a lot of them have known a lot, even like from when they were babies, were meeting with each other and knew each other, which was really cool. Oh, wow. That from like that infant standpoint, they got to grow up together. Hmm. Not like together, together. Sure. Yeah. Right. In that That's really cool. I hadn't really thought about the fact that with technology and and the DNA test that a lot of kids could be really young if their parents are interested in having them meet siblings, Mm it would be pretty easy to do. Yeah, and I don't even know how they all got to know each other that young. Hmm. 
Yeah. That's actually a pretty good question. I should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, but, that's pretty wild. It's like I guess like the parents met up or did something like that. Wow. But that and some people find out in different ways. Some people never knew they were donor conceived until they took a DNA test. Uh, and that was quite a shock to them and very hard for them because they're like, well, I have been lied to. Like, I don't right. know how to feel about that. Right. Yeah. And so it's hard for them in that aspect, but we try and support them, you know, the best we can. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's one of the other sides of it is that it's hard to understand everything, especially when the people that are closest to you, you feel like haven't been completely forthcoming or truthful with you. Mm-hmm. If you can't trust your parents, I mean, who can you trust, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. But it's awesome that you're there to, you know, kind of help them through this because, mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely could be a very traumatic experience for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whenever like someone gets added to the group chat and they're like, whoa, like that's a lot of people. We're like, it's okay. Like, take your time. Like, if you want to you leave and then come back once, you know, it's processed in your head and you're ready to talk to everybody, then that's fine. Don't feel rushed and obligated. Mm-hmm. Like, we completely understand. We've all been through this before. There's, like, you can take your time. For sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. How active is the chat? I mean, we talk every day someone will send like a tiktok or we'll talk about like what they're up to like one of my brothers got deployed so Mm. his time frame is a little different so i'll wake up and he'll be texting and i'm like isn't it like three in the morning for you right now (laughs) or something like go to bed (laughs) Um, but no it's very interesting to see like like everyone's different personalities all at once, like responding to the yeah. same thing. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go back a second. I'm just curious of like what the reaction of your grandparents were while you're driving with your cousin and your cousin kind of blurts that out. <laughs> okay. I don't even remember because I was really young. Oh, okay. But I think they kind of just told her to be quiet, I would imagine. <laughs> right. Something like that, honestly. Um, I was probably in elementary school oh okay so it's kind of like a blurred thing i just mainly remember like oh who's my dad don't you come from a sperm donor <laughs> and then that was kind of like wow. it the rest is a little funky. sure and i guess that your mom had to immediately kind of explain the situation <laughs> after wow. that yeah wow <laughs> oh boy because i always wondered i was always asking i'm like you know who's my dad because i'm like i see all these other like parents with a dad i'm like aren't I supposed to have one? Uh, But I didn't get that solid answer, I guess, until they could actually explain it to me and I could understand. Otherwise, I feel like I would just be so confused. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Have you guys talked about maybe doing like a, like a big group vacation or like try to do a reunion where you can get everybody Mm -hmm. together? We have talked about going to, I think Gatlinburg. Oh yeah. And we want to rent out like one of those big cabins. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like if all of us there split the price, yeah, it would be very affordable in that aspect. So we're talking about something like that, getting a big house somewhere. It's just with so many people and so many different work schedules and school schedules and family schedules, it's very hard to narrow it down to when everybody can do it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you know, your story is obviously out in the public and stuff. Now you mentioned being on TV and, and having other interviews, but how do you mm-hmm. tell somebody new in your life, a friend, what your situation is and how many siblings you have? <laughs> it varies. I guess it depends on the situation. Um, like, for example, I'm coaching a volleyball team and we were like, say your name and give a fun fact. And a lot of them were saying how many siblings they had. And then when it got back to me, they were like, well, what's your fun fact? And I'm like, I got y'all beat on the sibling. (laughs) I got 70. But so it's like in that aspect, I suppose, like kind of just blurted out. Yeah, gotcha. Because it catches people by surprise. It's interesting to see people's reactions to it. When they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure there, there's like a million questions that pop up when you do that. Yeah. yeah. They're like, how is that possible? <laughs> yeah. Like on comments on posts, people say like, your dad was a rolling stone. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. for sure. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody been able to sort of like guesstimate like how many potential siblings there could be out there? Mm. Um. We get around, I would say, like two every couple months. Okay. If that, maybe more. I would say there's definitely a lot more than we think. Because mm-hmm. we hit like 60 and we were like, wow, like that's a lot. There can't be any more. And then more just keep showing mm-hmm. up. So 
I have no clue. Like it could just keep on. They they could just keep on rolling in, right? Or it could be a steady stop for a long time, yeah. and then more might come. But I guess we won't know until we just stop hearing from people. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. Is there a yeah. since you guys only have his donor number? Are you able to determine like is he st- still being distributed? Mm. That's a good question. I don't think he is. I think we can look for him on the donor registry or something like yeah. that. And I remember we did that and we saw his donor number. But if he is still donating, <laughs> he needs to take a little step yeah. back. <laughs> but he already has enough. Like he's got enough money from it all and everything. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but I don't know. That's a good question. I'd have to look into wow. it. More. Have you guys talked about if, the, if potentially a half sibling comes up that's from him? That's one of his actual kids that he raised. Oh. Yeah. That, wow. I don't even know how I would feel about that. Like if they did a DNA test and they don't know about us, like if he never told them and then they're just like, who are all of these people? Right. And he's like, I have something to tell you. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, that would be interesting. I mean, I would want to talk to them. Yeah. I mean, they're one of my half siblings, so, right? Mm-hmm. but if he lets them do his DNA test or if he's told them not to, or I don't know what the, what is going on, right. mm-hmm. but hmm. it'd be definitely something interesting to find Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, you just made me think about that when I tell people my story, uh, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, you, I get things out of order, right. And sometimes I mention, you know, having all these parents and people look at me kind of like, how is that? Po-? I'm like, Oh, <laughs> because I was adopted, you know, because yeah. I'll sometimes talk about having two moms, you know, and people a- automatically assume like that I'm talking about lesbian mothers who raised me together. I'm like, no, 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 wait, wait. I'm talking about my adoptive mother mm-hmm. and then my adoptive stepmother and, you know, all those things. Right. So it's, it's interesting how um, you have to have time when you're telling those stories because no, it's you like, do. It can't be a quick it's like, wait, wait, sorry. I'm, I'm getting things out of order. Let me stop being confusing. And even trying to put the family tree together sometimes is, I remember when we first found all my siblings and even Corey was like, this is confusing. Can we write this down? You know, it's like, <laughs> and I only have six, which is, you know, different, but. Oh yeah. I, I mean, that's still a lot for siblings too. Yeah, though, so ha- seven is just half, too much. Yeah. Ha- ha- half, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Yeah. It's, has everybody been like mapping out a family tree? Wow. Um, not really. We, I mean, we can go on 23andMe and it'll show our family yeah. tree, just nothing on his side. Right. So, right. other than that. Hmm. Very cool. Wow. wow. Well, I mean, it definitely seems like you're handling this quite well. <laughs> you know? yeah. You'll have to definitely keep us in the loop if you and your siblings do end up like doing a big reunion or something like that, because it would be fun to hear about, oh, yeah, sure. um, you know, get together with, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 of you. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So exciting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, good luck on your finals and Thank thanks you. for sharing your story. Yes, of course. Thanks for talking. Of to course, me. yeah, awesome. I'm glad we finally got to. Yeah, for sure. Make it. I happen. know. Me too. Yeah. As we wrap up today's journey with Brenna, it's clear that family twists can lead us down remarkable roads. Her story isn't just about the numbers; it's a powerful narrative of discovery, identity, and the unforeseen bonds that linked us. Thank you, Brenna, for sharing your incredible journey, and to our listeners for joining us on this exploration of what it means to find family in the most unexpected places. Until next time, keep embracing the twists and turns of your own family stories.